All right, part five of Pong, what we're going to be doing is setting up blocks up here on the top that when our ball collides with them, what's going to happen is it'll score that and then um, they'll disappear. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that and we'll change some stuff around here. So we want to start out by going to the blocks and what I've done, I just right clicked and I collapsed all the blocks and just kind of got them organized. We're going to set up this ball one collide with differently. So I'm just going to drag all these blocks out. We're going to set it up so that we, so when ball one collides with the blocks that we're going to set up, that it'll work. So we need to go back to the designer. And we're going to go to drawing and animation. And we'll do the first one together. So you want to add an image sprite to the top here. And let's rename it. Let's just name it block one. and under properties for that let's go to picture and upload file choose file and on the 506 you want to go to the app inventor folder go to pong and let's go to blocks and in there I've created a series of blocks and I think they're 10 by 50 so 10 for the height 50 for the for the width um, and basically they're just different colors so I'm gonna pick one I'll put that in and we'll start with that one I'm gonna walk you through how to set it up and so what we're gonna need under control is if then this if then block so we want ball one when it collides with block one so we'll get block one or actually let's go to ball ball one here and we'll call ball one colliding with other and then we'll specifically name block one here. So go to block one, scroll down to the bottom, and select block one here. So when ball one collides with block one, we want this other stuff to happen. I'm gonna, and there's the bell. I'm gonna get rid of this block here. We want this stuff to happen here under then. So, when ball one collides with block one, the score will go up to one. The ball heading will change and the score will update. So we have that set up. So that'll work for that first block one. We also want block one to be invisible. So we need to go to block one and we need to get the set visibility for block one and I'm going to move it up to be the top. The order does matter. And I'm going to go to logic here and I'm going to set the visibility of it to false. So we have that. So when ball one collides with block one it becomes invisible. The score goes up one. The ball direction will change and the score will update. So if we open up our emulator Let's start our game. We still need uh, the collision for the paddle and the ball. So we need to have that set up as well. So let's add that. We need to click on this little blue button. And we need to get this else if statement in there. So you drag it in here. And actually what we'll do we're gonna move this one to else if here and move this to then and on this top part ball one if it collides with the paddle so we'll do ball one here again if the ball one collides with other being the paddle so we'll go to paddle then we want the heading of the ball to change. So I'm gonna, you can right click and duplicate and then move it up. Okay, and we don't want it to score when it hits the paddle. We just want it to score when it hits the block. So let's, let's reset and we'll try that out now. And now the only hard thing is actually hitting this block. But once you have one set up, what you're gonna do, I'll just let that, let that run, you're going to click on this blue block and you're going to get another if or else. Not else. Else if. 
Let's see. Let's try that again. There we go. And basically, we'll go to the designer. We'll walk through one more. Let's drag another image sprite in here. I'm going to name it Block 2. And I'm going to get another block. And basically what I'm going to do, I'll go to copy this. So right click, duplicate, drag it down. We need to adjust this one so it's block 2. And then copy this one. This will be block 2. And let's copy this one, duplicate it, duplicate, and we'll also duplicate the update score procedure. Now let's try it out here. Whoop. I'm going to pause it and restart it here so you guys don't have to wait for that. We'll try it out. And I've got it up here, and as you can see, it's already scored one of them. I can restart with the start button. Um, what we need to do now is set it up so that when we restart it makes the blocks visible because when you hit the start button it doesn't bring these back up so the last thing we'll do is we'll go to the start button we want to expand it here and we want to set the visibility on block one and block two so block one We'll set block one visibility to true. That way it comes back on. And then let's just duplicate this. And we'll set it for block two. And you'd want to repeat that for every block they did. So now when we hit start, it should make them visible again. And it looks like this is starting a bit too high. Um, so we also want to adjust that. And that's the height on it. So let's see. I'm going to collapse all the blocks here. Let's see. We need to adjust where it's starting out at. Um, and let me show you how to do that. Okay, so to fix uh, where the ball is starting when you hit start, what you want to do is open up your button click, expand it, and under where it says call ball one to move to, it's setting the X and the Y location. Uh, the Y location is the height, so you're going to remove ball one dot radius here, and you'll get, go to math and get a value. And depending on the number of rows that you have, I would set it um, at like, let's try 60. I'll hit start. That'll come in at, this, at basically 60. So from 0 down to 60. So it'll start at 60, which is about right here. Depending on if you have like another row of blocks, you'd want to increase that number to like 100 or something else. Okay. So that looks like it covers all of the uh, corrections. So once you have that finished, you are done with part five.